Hey, how you doing everyone? Thanks again for tuning in. We're going to use the 5150 today and try and dial in Dime's vulgar display of power guitar tone. Just going back and listening to this album again all week and, and getting familiar with all the songs, it, it really takes me back to when I was a teenager and we are on the school bus and everything had just such attitude and they made a huge impact. You weren't around, mate, but they made a massive impact in Australia and me as a teenager growing up, we... We just had this album constantly on the school bus and everything and, and just songs like Walk and Hostile and I think it was just a whole fresh take of this battering ram band that came out of nowhere and just sat everyone on their ass. It was just really cool. Everything about Dime's style really shone through on this and the attitude and the charisma of Phil was just next to none. It was amazing vocals and you really sent... He believed in all the lyrics that he spewed out in that album and it just connected really well with the teenagers and I loved it and I still do to this day and it really does just speak volumes about the band and, and how iconic they were for so many people growing up. So I've fitted the Dime Bucker set to the Charvel SoCal and it really is cool. It suits it really well and sounds heavy and mean and I find the ceramic Dime Bucker itself, just that bar magnet, it's it's really aggressive. It's got really good attention to detail. It's not too heavy on the bass. It's just a, got a real mid focus to it. And I'll play a riff soon and we'll just check it out versus the Duncan SH6 distortion, which I always thought the Duncan distortions were like they're a ceramic magnet as well. And I thought they were going to be really similar to the Dimebucker set. But after comparing them both, there is a big difference. And I'll just play a riff now and we'll just go through it. I love that riff. It's just so cool. And as you could probably hear in that, the Jackson Dominion has the SH6 uh, distortion pickups in it. And I find that they have are just really heavy on the bass and heavy on the treble, and it's got a bit of shrill on the top end. Um, not that you could probably hear that too much in that riff. It's, it's just a really aggressive one. But uh, the Dimebucker itself is just really mid-focused in that it has that sort of semi-cocked wah they just sound a lot more tight and focused and riffs just seem to be a bit nastier with these. Uh, it's just me, but it's just personal preference. I, I like the Dimebucker. I think it's a fantastic pickup for all sorts of genres. Okay, just to answer some of your questions as we're going, the tuning for these songs, this is in E standard essentially, but Dime tuned just, just south of E standard. So if you have your tuner there and you set it to 425 hertz, That'll put you pretty close to how all the records were, where it is E standard. And again, for the lower tunings, he tuned standard tuning again, mostly down at D, uh, a whole step down. And then if you tune to 425 hertz again, you'll you'll get that on the money. Uh, now we'll move over to the amp. I find that the 5150, it just does Pantera really well with a few EQs in the front. Uh, a few videos back, we are exploring metal tones on the 5150 and we came across a really crunchy, abrasive tone on the red channel itself, when you wind the gain and the mids back and boost the treble and bass, it gave this really aggressive tone and I knew it would be a, like a great bass line that we could work with for like an Exodus or Pantera or something that's just like a, a, a really good starter point for an amp to work with. Uh, usually on high gain amps, when you roll the gain right back, 
things start to thin out and sound terrible. But on the 5150, on the red channel, it just starts to really crunch up and sound awesome. And on the back panel, you've got the density knob and I've got that turned up to about seven. I'll just quickly show you now what the amp sounds like on its own. And all I've got in the front end is the Boss NS2 noise suppressor. And that's in the front end and the, and the effects slip to quieten things down, but it's really not affecting the tone. So this is what you hear. As generic as that sounds, it's a really good foundation to build a tone like this. So the first thing I do is I go to the MXR 6-band EQ. So it really is working like an OD in the front end, and I'm squeezing the guitar signal down to, to really accentuate these pickups, actually, to make them sound even more aggressive than what they are in that same sort of spectral range in the high mids there. So, And turning on the MXR 6-band, this is what you get. So that's everything going on in the front end of the amp for his rhythm tones. For solos, I do kick on an overdrive, but for rhythm tones, that's it. And so now we move to the effects loop where I'm really just outputting the tone of how I want it to try and match the album now. And it starts with the MXR 10 band EQ, and I'm really scooping out the mids in the 1K region, adding a slight bit of treble and bass just to fatten things up. But essentially it's just trying to make the amp sound more like the album. And so this is how it sounds, adding it to the chain. <laughs> And lastly, we get to the Sine Effect Para EQ, which is also in the effects loop. It's downstream from the MXR 10 band. And what this does is it gets that signal from the 10 band that's sort of scooped out the mids and it's fattened up the bass. It gets that whole signal and just focuses that in a mid direction. Even if you have a 10 band or two 10 band EQs in a row, you won't get the same tonal effect that the Para does. And you just end up with this aggressive, strange tone that's really unique. That is the coolest riff too. It just keeps circling around and gets more intense as the song goes. It's, it's just really good. I love it. Uh, and now we get to the output of the tone. Usually I go through the Mesa 112 Recto that's in the corner with the ISO cab over the top and an SM57. Uh, but for this tone, I really find that the Marshall 1936V cabinet, it's got G12 vintage speakers in it, which are voiced like the original V30s that came out in 85, 86. And they've got a more shrill top end and a heavier bottom end to them. And I think they're better suited to Pantera. And it's, it's a nastier sounding speaker. They really are. This 212 is a really difficult cab to mic up at a reasonable volume. I've got to basically rip my ears off to get a good recording sound out of this. In the downside, it's hard to mic up. I've actually got to turn the amp up way too high. And it's definitely uncomfortable to try and mic up being a 212. And... It always just sounds fizzy no matter where I'm really placing the microphone. It's just a really difficult cab I find to mic up nicely. Uh, so for this, I'm actually using the Torpedo Captor X a couple of different ways today. And I've got it going through the speaker itself, but it's being attenuated, so it's just at a nice bedroom level. Just to give you an idea how loud it is, this is what the vocal mic picks up. It's actually quite comfortable and that's a feature of the Torpedo that I really like is that you can attenuate 
and really drive your amps and get them exactly where they need to be and still use the speakers that you want to use, but you're just not deafening yourself at home. So the main feature of the Torpedo Captor X is it artificially creates a cab and mic setup to go with your amp. So you can record without actually using a microphone. So I've got the XLR going in straight into the audio interface where I'm simulating a Marshall 412 cabinet with an SM57 in front of it. And I find it's capturing this amp in its entirety really well. And those presets are actually saved in the unit itself. So I don't have to have it plugged into anything all the time when it's going, I can, it's a standalone feature. So it's only connected to the amp and it simulates whatever speakers you really want to drive out of that amp. And this sounds like my Marshall in the room. So I'm really happy with it. So you've heard all the rhythm tones now. And another feature that's really cool with the Torpedo in the software is you can set different rooms and have different ambiences attached. And you can set that up exactly the way that you want it and recall it later on the front end of this. I just really like the fact that I'm sitting in the room with the 5150 cranked. It's coming out of the 1936 vintage cabinet and you guys are getting a really clean signal that sounds the way that I hear it in the room. And I'm really just wearing headphones now just to monitor the microphone so I'm not talking too loud or close to it or anything. Um, other than that, I just sit and listen to the amp. So again, guys, I really hoped I could show you something today and just enjoyed dialing this tone on such an awesome album. So... Thanks again, and I'll see you next week, guys. Bye.